All right, what's up, guys? Welcome to the Angelo Carlos podcast. This is episode number two with my friend Ryan. He is a consultant at uh, Accenture, which is one of the largest consulting firms here in the world. He's worked across several projects. Right now, he's working on an SAP implementation uh, for the, his client. And then, Ryan, once you introduce yourself, um, talk about what you do at, um, at Accenture, and then let's talk about also kind of like your background here. I know you're an MBA at UCLA, correct? Yep, yep, yep. You're my classmate. Um, I'm currently pursuing my, you know, part-time MBA program, uh, MBA at UCLA. Um, so yeah, uh, I transitioned into being a management consultant at Accenture in May 2022 when I was, uh, you know, starting in the program. Um, and my area of practice is um, under Industry X, uh, which you know kind of revolves around product development and engineering. And uh, my specialty is uh, intelligent asset management. So anything from uh, maintenance processing to condition monitoring to predictive analytics, um, preventative maintenance, um, that's kind of my area of specialty. And, uh, you know, kind of like you were saying, I come from um, an industry background. So uh, my actual uh, bachelor's degree was uh, from UCLA um, as a bachelor's of science in chemical engineering. Um, so I guess, you know, where I started my career, my first job out of college, I had no idea like what I wanted to do. Um, my third year, I did an internship um, at a company called Air Products, which was um, a hydrogen production facility down in Long Beach, um, where I learned a lot about, um, you know, just kind of working in industrial settings, right? So, you know, First thing you do is you put on your PPE. So you get your no man. Yep. Exactly. Your fire retardant suit, uh, your, you know, steel toed boots, you know, you got your goggles, your hard hat, and uh, there you go. You're out in the field inspecting pipe, you know, inspecting instrumentation, uh, working with rotating equipment. So I got some really good exposure into, you know, learning what a hydrogen plant is. You know, how is hydrogen being produced? Um, how is it being used in an industrial setting? So um, with that background, um, you know, after I graduated, um, of course, the economy at the time wasn't super great, especially in the energy industry, uh, especially in California, right? California wasn't going to be building new refineries in the year 2015. Um, so, you know, for me, at the time I pivoted to um, a, I got a position as a semiconductor engineer um, down in a company uh, in San Diego, in North County, San Diego. So moved, you know, LA kid, um, grew up in LA, moved down to San Diego for uh, about a year um, and worked in kind of wafer processing. So any type of semiconductor processing techniques such as, you know, electroplating, uh, uh, photoresist development, um, you know, wet etching and dry etching, um, anything that had to do with, you know, producing these uh, developmental wafers that kind of form like a 3D LED um, type of uh, device. So, um, you know, that was a lot of really valuable lab experience working with chemicals, um, you know, highly corrosive chemicals, uh, which was required in the process. Um, but, you know, I kept thinking back to the time that I was at Air Products, you know, working in the industrial setting. And um, I felt, you know, that my studies in chemical engineering had a lot more to do with working in, you know, these big industrial settings. So, you know, around the end of 2017, uh, two years out of college, I made another career pivot um, and got really lucky um, and landed a job at the startup and commissioning engineer at a company called Technique FMC, um, which was located in Claremont, California. So mm -hmm. moved back to um, LA area. And uh, Technique actually really kind of gave me my first break mm -hmm. um, in terms of um, giving me really challenging and meaningful work, um, you know, all the way from, you know, designing hydrogen plants oh, to wow. actually, you know, sitting in the HAZOPs, right? So yeah. we're going over with the client, all of the design conditions, you know, all of the process uh, engineering parameters, 
um, the electrical instrumentation, the mechanical equipment, um, you know, and then actually going out there as a startup commissioning engineer from, um, you know, actually laying down the pipe, mm -hmm. um, you know, the construction workers putting together the pipe according to the civil drawings all the way to, you know, actually starting up the equipment. So function testing, um, logic testing, you know, kind of doing the cause and effect, making sure the process control systems are working well. Um, and for me, you know, as a early mid twenties engineer, it was my first time kind of getting hands-on experience out in the field, being able to lead a team of, you know, electricians oh, wow. or pipe fitters and, you know, get a little bit more of that leadership and management experience um, you know, working with teams of, you know, anywhere between eight to 15, you know, executing these tasks mm -hmm. um, under a project deadline for different clients, yeah. right? What, what was it like being in the field? Because being in the field is completely different from being in the office. You're exposed to different types of workers, um, as well as a different type of kind of project deadlines and outcomes. So what was it like being in the field for you? Right, so uh, first of all, it's incredibly, eye-opening because yeah. um, I consider myself as a pretty adaptable person you mm -hmm. know I was born in China I came to the US when I was eight so I'm, wow, I'm a very right. observant um, when it comes to just like okay let's I'm in a new setting yeah I need to understand you know how these people operate and it was kind of similar like that um, as, a, as a startup commissioning engineer because um, you know I'm working for many different clients like a company like Chevron mm -hmm. would probably not operate the same way as a company like a you know small mom and mom and pop oh, shop mm -hmm. kind of uh, refinery where they only have one asset. So, um, and you're going all across the U.S. Right. So my first assignment was in rural Montana. Wow. Where you know there's a lot of the people there are haven't really seen too many you know Asian people. Mm -hmm. um, it's like ninety five percent white, maybe four percent Hispanic and black and then you got some guys at Walmart that are Asian right mm -hmm. um